Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. We are here today with Rochelle Gatto. She's a naturalist with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. And you're a naturalist, so what do you normally do on a day-to-day? -day? Uh, normally, um, I would be out there teaching people how to fish, how to shoot a bow, an animal program, so what cool critters they can find outside, um, and then even kayaking. So I do a lot of kayaking and stand up paddleboarding. We have 75 state parks. I was lucky enough that last year I did the 75 state parks in 10 days. Whoa. So I could travel all of them. Which Whoa. Was awesome. And then I learned through that process that our state parks, people live about an average about an hour away from every state park. So it, they're not that far. So I encourage people to use one that's nearby and exactly. explore those first. And amazingly, like also, like I've started off at a several down in like Columbia County, like by the river, and it was Beaver Creek State Park. And a lot of the people in that town didn't even know it was there. So that's like a big, like we're trying to open people's eyes, like in your own backyard, there's a beautiful park. So it's amazing when you see how much the Ohio Department of Natural Resources really encompasses. I, I, it blows your mind. Um, there's so many state parks state nature preserves. Um, so talk m about that, the scope of what it all entails. It's, it's massive. Yeah, as an agency as a whole, we have a lot to offer for everybody. We have the beautiful nature preserves where we're out there protecting some endangered species, plants. Um, then we have our great water areas where we provide boating opportunities for the public and our state parks where you can kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, and then we have the Division of Wildlife that's also out there protecting. So we have a little bit of everything for everyone from birding to hiking to boating and then camping. Right. So first of all, you have so much, but not everything is really open. Some things are still kind of closed. Can you walk us through that and where we're at with some of the, some of the major facilities? Yeah. So with the whole COVID issue that is happening, um, we are limiting our areas of access. So if you go camping, you might go to your regular camp spot and notice that some of the shower houses aren't open. We still offer some, but we always want you to call ahead to your favorite park to see what is exactly open. Um, we do offer some restroom facilities being open still, but not all of them. Some of our campgrounds are huge and every little section has a, a shower house. They might not all be open at this time. Uh, when you come to our day use parks, it's a little bit different. Um, the restrooms may or may not be open. Um, parking is a big issue at some of our parks. So we always want to make sure that you're parking in a parking spot, not along the road. Uh, we wanna keep our visitors safe. And then um, the playgrounds are open, but it's at your own risk. So we don't clean them regularly. Our restrooms, we're out there, we're cleaning them multiple times a day. Um, our offices that are open, we're cleaning the high traffic areas vigorously throughout the day, trying to keep the germs down and allow visitors to still come and partake in our parks. So um, you are doing a lot of cleaning and sanitizing. Um, mm -hmm. Have you done anything else in terms of uh, the facilities that people should know about in terms of safety during, during COVID here? Um, so we do encourage masks. When you do come into an office that is open, um, our associates are wearing masks. So we have a mask on when we're interacting with customers. Um, everybody in the field, when we're out in the field and somebody comes up to us, we have a mask on. So we're trying to cut down on the spread of germs. Okay. So you guys are all wearing masks. You encourage masks. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the other things that you're encouraging people to do? Obviously, there's the six foot, which yes. even outdoors, I mean, I think a lot of people are under the impression I'm outdoors. I, you know, I can't be affected by COVID, but we know that's not true. So you're still encouraging masks even when people are outdoors. Yes, and again, with the six foot distance and then to keep your group numbers down to 10. Um, at our campsites, we encourage just the single household per campsite. Um, you have to reserve ahead of time. You can't just walk in and take a campsite. Um, and then our shelter houses aren't open yet. Uh, we are encouraged people to, again, our 
motto is always to leave nothing but traces. So when you do come to our parks, please take your garbage with you. So the next visitor can enjoy the beautiful scenery as well. Right. So um, if you're sick, stay home. Yes, yes, we, definitely. We have to remind people of that. Um, also, it's a good idea to probably carry the hand sanitizer because um, you might be touching things. There's, there's yes. still public areas, right? Yes, correct. Um, I know as a naturalist, I'm always encouraging my visitors um, when we're out on a hike or we're kayaking, a backpack's your best friend. You can keep everything in there, water bottle, snack, hand sanitizer. So it's, it's yeah. a great little device that goes on your back. Yeah. And because a lot of the facilities are not going to be open, you're not going to be able to get any food, uh, even water. Uh, the, the water fountains are not open, yes. right? Yes. I will say that um, at some of our parks, the marinas that are private, so they're ran by somebody else, those are open. So they have their own stipulations and requirements as well, but they are open. So I know Caesar Creek has a really nice marina down there and it offers food and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure it's having a mask and making sure you're staying the six feet apart. Right. Um, I wouldn't use a, a water fountain anyways, even if it was open <laughs> actually now. So uh, yeah. bringing water with you, enough water. And we've yeah. been bringing food uh, for yeah. like, basically a meal like so that if you can stay out for a few hours and you're not like getting hungry and wanting to go get a snack somewhere right yeah i mean all of our parks have beautiful scenery so i always encourage people to bring something in to have like a picnic per se because we have that beautiful site for you to enjoy your your lunch or your meal right um binoculars is another one where maybe you can't get up as close to things because of this you know and that way you feel like Everyone wants to rush up and it's like, if you got binocs, maybe you'll. Yeah, I always tell my visitors, um, I give them binoculars. I'm like, how would you like it if somebody came to your house and just like ran up on you into your yard and was looking at you? We're doing the same thing to our friends. Um, it, it scares them, it startles them and binoculars get you up and close. And with today, we have a lot of visitation at our parks, which we're thankful for. So the wildlife is a little bit skittish and they're standoffish and they're out in the distance. So binoculars bring you up close to them. And then another note too with our trails is some of our trails are now one way. So if you're gonna go to a park, make sure to call ahead and see if their trails are in a one way direction. Yep. So hawking, mommy bay's boardwalk, they're all a certain way that you have to go. On the loop areas, uh, it's usually clockwise, right? So. People that have a digital watch are going to be really confused. But yes. <laughs> so on your website, odnr.gov, you've got guides. I know you've got like activity guides for kids with like coloring books and puzzles and they're educational too. Yes. So. Yeah, it's a great way to get children outdoors and doing something else. Um, we have just started this wonderful uh, storybook trail at some of our parks. I know at my park, Wingfoot Lake State Park, we just opened one up and it's one leaf, two leaf, count with me. And it's a great way to get kids out there doing literature, being active and enjoying the park. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Got all your maps and stuff and, and making reservations for a lot of these facilities, right? It's just, you really have to do it now. You can't, you can't just walk up and expect to, to, you know, enjoy all this stuff. Yeah, Reserve Ohio is our website. And we're also doing another promotion, which I think is really great. My family loves it, is we created a passport. It's Ohio State Parks Passport. So you can start marking the days that you went there, taking a little note of things that you enjoyed. And then at our offices, once they all open up, we have a stamper that we can stamp for you. But in the back of the book, there's a little sticker so you can stamp it yourself. So it's a great way of collecting and seeing all the state parks that you've visited with your family. It also gives you stuff to do like before and after because you're not always out and a lot of times you're sitting around inside and at home or whatever. Mm -hmm. I find this is like the planning of these things is, is a really cool activity. Then you do them and then there's like, you take your pictures and you, you put them, show them to people, you do all yeah. stuff, you post them or whatever. Definitely. And the kids, you know, if you have kids planning that stuff and then afterwards doing stuff with it and you guys already have this, which is amazing that you already yeah. had this stuff up and ready to go. Yeah. And another great tool that we have right now, um, a lot of the naturalist and other agencies in our 
the vision, we're doing YouTube uh, video. So we talk about the fossils that you can find in Ohio, Ohio pollinators. Um, so if you go to our ODNR YouTube page, we have videos for you and then you can kind of see a sneak peek of all the parks that we have too. Just and another thing that we have to offer right now too with a lot of uh, the public pools being shut down is our beaches are still open. Now we do encourage that safety. Um, they are there. Most of our beaches aren't having a lifeguard present. So we encourage you to watch your children. Please don't drink or be any under any influence while you're out there swimming. Stay within the buoys. Um, sometimes like the water will drop down really fast. So like if your kids are out there, maybe walk out with them to see where the depth is. And like a pool, you can't see the bottom of the lake. So, but we encourage people to go out there, practice the safe distancing, but get cooled off as well because it's a hot one. <laughs> it's so amazing to see the wildlife, the birds, the plants. Ohio has such diversity. And little secret, since uh, everybody's been locked down, Mother Nature has just gone crazy. And there's birds you've never seen before. There's plants you've never seen before. It's like Mother Nature's just taking revenge. They're like, fine, you guys go take a break, man. We're, yes. we're taking over here. It's, they sure did. It's awesome. So pass along our thanks to your team. Thank you, Rochelle, for taking a few moments. And, you know, we'll see you out there at the, uh, out in the trails. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. Be well and stay safe. Thank you.